Hello and welcome back to the Freezing Bear channel. In today's video, I'm gonna explain how I pretended to be a cutlery expert and got away with it. People believed me. So I'm talking about two videos I have on my channel. One is Cutlery Expert Breaks Down Cheap and Expensive Silverware. And the second one is Cutlery Expert Answers Popular Flatware Questions and Unboxes Arn Jacobson Flatware. So the first video was just supposed to be a joke. I thought it'd be funny to pretend to be like a cutlery expert and somebody who like puts so much thought into cutlery, something that like a lot of people don't even really care about. And then I made up a bunch of stories and experiences I had and I uploaded the video. When I uploaded it, like barely anybody watched it. But recently this video has over 7,000 views. But what I wasn't expecting is a lot of people think this is a serious video. So I'll show you a clip of the video. So this is a clip of the first video. My name is Michael Romeo and I'm a cutlery expert. I have a bachelor's degree in cutlery sciences, which I got at Edmonds University. This next knife was a very influential knife. This knife was first patented in 1947. The guy who invented it, John Graham II, he was having difficulties chopping his potatoes. And for most people, when you have a dull knife, you decide to sharpen the blade. But with him, he was like, well, I think it's actually the handle that is the problem. So he made this super ergonomic handle, which improves the grip of the knife by 25%. And it gives you a 25% better cutting experience. I was not expecting to trick anybody making this video. I thought people would watch it and be like, ah, that's kind of dumb. That's all I was expecting. But on this video, I have 50 comments. So we're just gonna have a look at some of them because they're quite funny. So the first comment here with nine likes is, what an interesting career choice. Very fascinating. Somebody else commented, very informative. This guy even asked me to review Arne Jacobson cutlery, which I did in my second video. So there's a lot of comments on here from people saying like, this is a really informative, great video. Obviously because they're a comment, it is hard to pick up on if they're trying to be ironic and if they're trying to just play along with the video. So, you know, I'm not 100% sure, but a lot of comments do genuinely seem to believe that this is a real video. Now we're gonna have a look at some of my favorite comments from this video, the ones where people are kind of mad. That's an interesting way to waste your life studying a bachelor's of science in cutlery. <laughs> Like this person's like annoyed. So Leo, don't worry, I'm not wasting my life. I'm making YouTube videos instead. Hmm. Another person commented, Mickey Mouse degree. I find it funny that people got kind of annoyed about the degree I had. They're like, ah, oh, that's a stupid degree. Why would anybody get that? <laughs> Don't worry people, it doesn't exist, at least as far as I know. Who knows, probably coming soon. Cutlery sciences will be coming soon to a university near you. I feel like if he needs to justify why his job is important, his job is not important. <laughs> so another person got annoyed because they thought I was bragging about my job. Every now and again, I get like another comment on this video and it just makes my day because they're just so funny. So to give some of these comments more context in the video, I pretended that I was an authenticator and that people from Storage Wars would take their cutlery finds to me and I would like value them and say how much they're worth. Another funny story I have was the one time I accidentally ripped off one of the guys from the Storage Wars show. He brought us a really nice set of fine silverware. He wanted us to determine how old it was and what materials it was from and how much it was worth, of course. So me being new to the cutlery scene, I misread the dates on the back of the spoons and I thought that they were from 1993 and they were actually from 1893. And then I also thought it wasn't pure silver. So I only said that they were worth $200. He didn't spend that much on the storage locker. So he still took the $200. However, when my boss went through the silverware later, he actually determined that the value of it was about $300,000. So yeah, we kind of ripped him off pretty good. Probably shouldn't have said that. Um... I thought most people would be like, oh yeah, he's making this up. He's obviously joking. Which episode of Storage Wars did the silverware get misidentified? I'm so tempted just to comment back like a random episode and have him watch through it. <laughs> That'd be kind of mean though, so I probably won't do that. I'm not trying to make fun of anybody who commented on this video. It's almost an interesting experiment that I didn't intend on being an experiment. This guy, so you're a crook. Thanks for letting me know. <laughs> So now I have a bunch of people thinking I'm a really bad person for ripping off somebody on Storage Wars. So <laughs> that's pretty funny, I guess. And then I also said that I worked on the set of the Titanic movie and I was the one who made sure the dinner scene was like accurate with like the placement of the forks and knives and everything. One of my favorite stories I have is from when I was working on the set of the Titanic. I was in charge of making sure all the utensils were the right from the right time period and everything. And uh, one of them accidentally got lost and it was moved over to the catering facility. And one crew member accidentally used it and ate with it. And um, he ate with a $15 million fork. 
But even after saying all that, I have people going, you know, like, what set would you recommend and what place can I order it from? I'm a huge fan of airline spoons. The forks and knives are kind of meh, but EVA Air has the best design spoons in my opinion. I'd really like to get my hands on more of them, but for now, I use Vietnamese made IKEA spoons. I also made up this story as well in the video. You see how it's not perfectly rounded at the top? This was a spoon that was actually used by a prisoner to escape and he left it behind and they kept it. This was used to dig a three foot concrete hole. Did they ever catch the prisoner who dug a three foot hole? I really hope not. <laughs> I agree with the comment though. If somebody did manage to escape, prison with a spoon like that'd be pretty impressive <laughs> there's this one here interesting stories but you didn't give us any information to figure out how to buy quality cutlery what kinds of steel what kinds of weight size etc you worked on the titanic you ripped somebody off on storage wars but why don't you tell me more about cutlery <laughs> so what i did is i replied and i linked him to my second video which is where i went more serious into it like i threw in some real facts as well as some made up stories as well because you can't have everything made up that's the whole point with this is you have to like add a little bit you got to sprinkle in a little bit of truth and then people kind of believe it a little bit more Unless everybody's just trolling me and I'm just like the, I just got completely, everybody made up comments. These are all made up comments. And then as soon as I release this video, there's going to be everybody who commented on this video. Like I tricked a guy who tried to trick me on the internet and it'll just be like goes full circle. Comment down below what you think though. Did I trick these people or are they tricking me? Maiko, this video would have been much better if you added more information considering you claim you are an expert. I like the degree background, but for 13 minutes, yes, I watched it all. The time could have been leathered with useful information about brands, how items were made, where, and so on. Thank you so much for giving me all that watch time. That is great. I need more people to do that. That's actually really great. <laughs> I'm not trying to sound too arrogant here. I'm sorry. Looking back on that video, I don't actually think the film quality of it is very good. Like, I think it looks a bit messy. Obviously, I wasn't able to trick everybody. So now we're going to have a look at some of those comments. The people who figured it out. This is satire, correct? You'd have had, you'd have, you would have have, you would have to have been. Get up with it! You would have had to been like 10 years old during the movie, The Titanic. The Titanic movie came out in 1997 and I was born in 1998. So that movie actually came out a year before I was born. So that's kind of why I made up that story. Cause I thought there's nobody who's gonna believe me. Like obviously I look way too young to be on the set of the Titanic. So this guy actually thinks I'm like 10 years older than I am now. Do I look like I'm 30? Do I look that old? Then this person commented, you had me going there for a while there kid. That's why I gave you a like. I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> this is the reaction I was expecting from people. And then there's this guy. How do people think this is real? Either he was like two years old when he worked on the 1997 Titanic film or he is one hell of a young looking 40 year old. Dude is clearly like 19 years old. Yeah, so this guy got 100% right as well. I completely understand how this guy's feeling because that was my reaction when I made this video and I got all these comments. I was like, how are people thinking this is real? And how would he be hired for the Titanic if he was new to the job with Storage Wars? This guy is completely poking holes in my whole story, making everything seem like it's all made up. Which it is, you know? He, he figured it out. Good job. Good on you. Next time you see a $15 million fork, just lick it. It will be just as satisfying. I don't need to try it to know. So wise words of advice from this guy. If you see a $15 million fork laying around, give it a little lick. So because that video worked so well, I kind of thought, what if I made a second one? Could I, could I double down on this? So I'll play you a quick clip of the second video and then we'll look at some comments. So it's been a year since I made my last video and I've been up to lots of stuff. I've been traveling the world. So one of the coolest places I got to go to was Nepal and I went to the base camp of Mount Everest. And there I was looking for cutlery used by people who climbed to the top of Everest. But I wasn't just looking for any old cutlery. I was actually looking for Sir Edmund Hillary's cutlery set, which he apparently lost at the base camp before he climbed to the top of Mount Everest. So if you can find that, it's about valued at roughly a million dollars. Right off the bat, we got this comment. Didn't know much about silverware until I found you. I actually found this very interesting, but I absolutely love your passion the most. Thanks for all the compliments. I'm glad you enjoyed the video. I talked about how I was gonna come up with my own cutlery design and sell sets of them, which I actually think would be a fun thing to do. So I actually do want to do that. At some point, I have looked into it and it's quite difficult to do. So if I figure out an easier way to do it, 
I will do that because I got comment going, can't wait to see your own cutlery design. So I'll be able to sell at least one set, I think. This guy said, can you do a video talking about the odor that silver flatware puts off? I'm also interested in how different materials affect different food flavors. I read somewhere that gold flatware has the best flavor and steel flatware actually tastes better than silverware. Again, I was not expecting to get this kind of comment. You know, I was expecting people to be like, fool me once, ha, <laughs> shame on you. Fool me twice, you're not fooling me twice, kind of thing. Another guy, keep the work up, man. If people really want it, I'll make a part three. My brother said I should make a video where I react to like dinner scenes and movies and then like critique them and say how accurate they are. Fascinating topic and video. Thank you for the information. Do you know if the nickel in the flatware leaches into the food for people who are sensitive or allergic to a level of nickel? So I actually replied to this comment and said you shouldn't have to worry about nickel leaching unless you are using the cutlery to cook with and it is submerged in an acidic mixture for a long time. So this is actually serious stuff. I wanted to search this up because I was actually kind of interested, like, would that happen? We've actually had some like real discussions on this video too. Like I've replied back. Every time I reply back, I'm being genuine. Like I'm not gonna like make up an answer because that would just be so bad. Like somebody's like, is this safe? And I'm just like, yes, it's totally fine. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> but I've been having a hard time keeping up with all the questions I've been getting from this video. I keep on having so many people, you know, asking me stuff like, what are the benefits and drawbacks for using silverware in everyday use? That's so interesting searching for place settings on Everest. So for this video, all the stories are made up, like they're all fake, but all the facts about cutlery and like, stuff like that is all real. Like that's all real stuff. Like I searched up, I did a bit of research into cutlery in like 1810 and what that all stands for and what to look for with cutlery. So this video does have genuine information in it as well as a bunch of just weird stories that are made up. So I guess that's why people think this one is more believable because I don't have anybody calling me out for anything I did on this one. But anyways, it's been a fun experiment. I've really enjoyed making these videos and answering questions from people on them. I think it's been really funny. To make this video, I even went and bought a set of this Arn Jacobson like cutlery as well, because one of the comments on my first video was like, oh, make a review of this. So I thought that'd be really funny to actually go out and buy it. And the thing is that box cost $100 for those five pieces of flatware. So it was quite expensive, but I still thought it'd be kind of funny just to put that in the video. <laughs> so hopefully no hard feelings to anybody I managed to trick, I'm sorry. Like I wasn't even intending it the first one, the second one I, I was. So, you know, I take full responsibility for that one. So we're gonna end the video here. Thank you to everybody who commented on those videos, allowing me to make this video here. If you did enjoy it, please give it a like and please subscribe and check out some of my other videos, including the cutlery videos, which will be linked in the description below. Hello.